All right, this is Pillow Kaiser again at a Rock Paper Shotgun article. I don't really visit these websites at all because they're just, they're extremely bare bones when it comes to everything. Like right here, to the untrained eye, eyes that haven't spent many hours trained on an exquisitely detailed topographical, topographical map checking all corners of the empire, human crying probably looks like another 4X game where you shuffle your units around and micromanage efficient settlements. Oh, uh, wait, no. That's not the part where it gets weird. Fork stands for explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. The four key th things you probably ha that you have to do to run a successful and burgeoning empire. End of the game. And humankind's is an amplitude stake on a on a big sprawling historical strategy game. Amplitude's previous game, Endless Space and Endless Legend, were apparently practice for this magnum opus. Okay. Uh. Yeah, kind of the thing about this is that Amplitude Studios apparently, like, uh, they said that, uh, uh, basically, Endless Space was easier to make because there's no terrain in space as much, besides planets. Uh, then Endless Legends, they got a feel for working the terrain and the issues connected to that, that's what they said there, and obviously it paid off because, honestly, the terrain in this game is the best that I've seen in a Florex game. Alright. Kind of the thing is, is that this person kind of writes like they've never played Civ. Like, I just, I don't understand, but yeah. Uh, basically, yeah, it's just like, it's confirmed. It's the, the combat is just like Endless Legends, where, um, the, uh, it's kind of like the campaign map is just the normal map, and then when two, you, like, uh, armies meet, it goes into a battle. And, yeah, it's kind of cool. Also, this interview, please watch it. This is very good. I'm going to link this in the description for you guys. It uh, kind of goes into the whole culture thing, which um, I'm kind of scared it's going to not work very well. But, yeah. I, this is this is kind of an article that doesn't really have very much information, to be honest. It, it says there's 100 units in this game, though. That doesn't sound like much, because... Well, I mean, maybe it sounds like a lot to people that aren't strategy game fans, but... There's more units in, I, I dare to say that there's more units in Total War, or, well, Steel Division and Steel Division 2. Well, those games, are, you can kind of forgive there, because they're going, like, really in-depth when it comes to, like, a specific front during World War II. And a lot of the same units kind of have, like, similar guns, but the thing is that they have, to, they have like, different layouts. So let's say there's, like, a rifleman squad that has, like, uh, the, uh, the infantry later probably has, like, a submachine gun like the squad leader, the uh, the rest of them have rifles, so most of the guns, and two of them might have like a like a like a DP-28 or whatever, light machine gun. And uh, you can compare that to like the Avtagmao Chiki or whatever it's called, the uh, assault squads for the Soviets, and they have like basically all submachine guns. So it's like, yeah, it's it's the same gun, but it's different layouts for the squad. So it makes sense, but um I kind of hope you can do that in this game where you can edit your units, though. So, like, your infantry. You could make it so, uh... Maybe there's, like, a... Like a submachine gunner squad versus, like, a rifleman squad and, like, a, uh... Like a light machine gunner. Like, a support squad or something. I'm saying squads because I don't really know what to call them in, for this game. But anyway, um... Alright. So far, it seems humankind and as their general approval, but the hands-off demonstration we di we saw didn't show loads, at least not compared to the amount of stuff that ends up in a finished 4x. It did efficiently or effectively communicate the tone, and it's perhaps slightly less pro-faced than other comparable historical sims, which we all seem to think, which we all seem to take themselves far too seriously. Um. I'm not really sure what to think of that statement, because, as far as I know, civilization is like, yeah, they probably do take themselves a little seriously, but, you know, it's just like, yeah, the, the civilization series just takes itself way too seriously for what it is. I mean, it's like, you go from frigates to, uh, to battleships in some of their games. Like, I, I can't take that seriously. 
I did like how um how when you go through the eras though it go your infantry goes from like a World War One bolt action style to a uh, to a uh, you know bolt action still, but they have like a guy with a semi-automatic rifle in it still. I I wish more games actually had that attention to detail because the uh, the path of technology just is kind of ignored in a lot of games. And well, I mean not ignored. It's just like it's not that in depth. So, yeah, I don't know, it's just, the technologies in Civ should be cheaper, but there should be a lot more of them. That's what I'm trying to say. Because it should, because uh, unlocking uh, combustion and stuff shouldn't take me 24 years during a war so I can get tanks. And maybe the printing press should be a little bit more expensive, but you know, whatever. I don't know. Or maybe like the printing press could be locked faster, but it has a bigger effect on the world. Currency should too, to be honest. All right, here we go. I asked if they're planning out early access or hold closed beta. Zamora said that they're not ready to talk about that, but they do have some plans, as mentioned in Amplitude Studios, or Amplitude's history of interacting with the community and the online interaction. Humankind is currently slated for 2020, but hopefully, we'll experience more inter or interaction soon. And the rest of the article is not really even worth going into. Like it talks about how the culture is kind of... Uh, it's exactly what I was afraid of. It's... Uh, yeah. Where you can have... Okay, here's the part that's... Act oh, yeah, it's exactly what I was afraid of. Here we go. It's... um. <laughs> You end up with a civilization that bears the marks of multiple cultural histories. You could have a cities with Egyptian pyramids down from the road from Japanese temples. I don't like that. There's also an option to transcend taking, for example, the ancient Egyptians right up to the modern times. Although it's hard to pull this off for more than one era, as your units quickly get antiquated compared to others. That makes no sense if they're tying technology with culture. As far as I know, the Egyptians are still around today. So, what the heck game? <laughs> uh, whatever. And it's just talking about predicting the tactics. It's just like, oh, okay, wow, he's building co coastal cities with harbors. So he's making sea units. Okay, that's pretty obvious. All right, here we go. You will be, be able to uh, look by looking at the map to identify who built the city and at which time, basically, said Velo. Morris added, it's meant to be like visiting real cities. How, if you visited the south of France, you'll still find the remains of the Romans. The, the same as you do in Bath in the UK. Nice. So, yeah. Depending on the era, you'll still see, like, these old buildings, which is, that's kind of cool. <sighs> well, that's about it, really. It's not really anything new in this article that much. It's just that the fact that, you know, games journalists can actually see things before everybody else, that kind of kind of annoys me, to be honest. Like, I'm not... Nobody is going to, going to pay just to go to these game conventions just to be disappointed. And this is one of the only games that looks like they'll... that actually is impressing me so far. So, um... I hope this ends up really good. The culture thing kind of spooks me, but if this game has a lot of bonding support, that's not going to be an issue because somebody will fix that. And maybe make like cultural trees where you can like choose to go down which path you go. So you got like the Indo-Europeans, you go for, then you go into like the Bronze Age with the, whatever Bronze Age culture that leads to whatever, whatever modern culture you go to. So like, let's say like the Bronze Age Celtic tribes or something. I don't know if those even existed, but they probably did. Or I guess you can go like the, I guess the better example would be like the, uh, the My Mycenaean Greeks. And you can go into like the ancient Greeks. Then you can go into the uh, Byzantines. Then you can go into, you know, the more modern Greeks or, and just kind of keep with the Greek. Because, like, Greek is obviously one of those really ancient cultures that you just, like, it doesn't really go away at all. 
Uh, and those cultures could probably branch out to other things. Oh, boy. Sorry, but I'm a little tired. But anyway, um... Another one would be, uh, you can go to, like, go into, uh, Latin. And the Latin culture group could probably split up into, like, the, uh, different, like, Latin... Like, uh, you know, the Romance-based languages. So you can go with, like, uh, Frank... Or Frankish, and then it would go into French. You know, like, ancient French. Or, like, uh, no, wait, no, old French. And then it would go into, like, modern French. Same with, like, uh you know, Spanish and stuff. And in the case of, like, the Chinese and stuff, you can go from, like, well, China's one of those, another one of those really ancient cultures that's just like, oh, they're still Chinese, it's just that, yeah. I mean, you could probably choose between, between the different types of cultures in China. Like, uh, the Han versus, like, the, uh, I forgot what the other one was that I know. Oh, well. I know this is a really lazy video, and it's just there's not very much information here. It's just that, um, about like 10, what, is it, what did they say, like 10 cultures or something? 10 different cultures to choose from for each era, so there's six eras. Okay, that's, yeah, that's not very much. And I'm not even sure what they put in the modern era. Oh, well. Well, this has been Pillow Kaiser, and I hope you guys have a good day.